I've done here is I've been uh, doing some basic sorting on my golf balls. Here's the uh, just the oldest, crappiest ones. And what these are good for is for people to go out to the cow pasture with and just use them for driving practice. So just any of the gnarliest balls I throw in this box and also the range balls. No one wants these range balls. they got the little stripes on them. No one wants those much for anything else but just driving practice. Uh, so this is a great place to do your worst balls. Now you can keep all your balls together and sell them to a dealer too. Uh, but you don't really get that much for them that way. Um, you get about the same amount that you get for these balls for all of them if you don't separate them. So I typically wash all my balls in a washing machine and then separate them. And these are the worst ones. And uh, these are random brands of balls over here, but I pick out, you know, they're shiny and new looking. Uh, still random brands. I sell these for like twice as much as what I sell with the practice ones. And then a little research at Academy or whatever. Go ahead and move down to these over here. And uh, you just pick out uh, at the sporting goods store what are the most expensive brands. And then I do save those out separately too, at least the ones that are in really good shape. And I sell these for as much as a dollar a piece. Um, some of the, some of the good, good brands are uh, TaylorMade Pentas, uh, Bridgestone Tour B330s, uh, Callaway Tour IS or IX. Taylor made Penta P's are really good, pretty easy to sell. Uh, Strixon, Z Star, these are high visibility ones, but the others are good too. And then uh, Nike, like Nike One Vapors, usually pretty good. This is, uh, I don't think this one's quite as good as the 20 XI, but it's still kind of a premium ball if it's in good new shape. And then the other brand that you definitely want to save all of, no matter what, even no matter how gnarly the condition is is your Titleist Pro V1s. That's the premium ball, that's what everyone wants. It's the easiest to resell. Uh, you want to pick out all the perfect ones. The perfect ones are going to sell for a dollar each and uh, the rest are just going to sell for depending on condition. Uh, I'm still like, I had a dealer that was buying these really bad ones for me from 20, for 25 cents a piece. I haven't been able to find him lately so I, I need to do some research. But even these gnarly ones they refurbish them. They, they put them in a sandblaster and they uh, blast off the skin and then they reskin them and sell them like new or refurbished, but still. Uh, the Pro V ones are worth a lot. All right, so what I'm doing over here, camera back to me. I'm just uh, counting out bags of uh, 200 balls. I'm just double bagging some HEB balls. There's 40, uh, 45. But yeah, I'll put, uh, I, I like to put I like to break everything down uh, to be worth about uh, $20. So I sell these balls for 10 cents each. So that's uh, so 200 balls is uh, going to be the $20. So it's really easy just to hand whoever you're selling these to uh, one bag and then they hand you a nice even $20 bill to do the way I uh, sort my balls. So boom, here's I double bag these and here's uh, 200 golf balls. So that's a $20 bill in my pocket. Just as easy as picking them up like on, a, on an Easter egg hunt. And they're the lowest quality balls available, so anything you pick up is going to be worth at least a dime. They're pretty easy to sell at that rate, too. These nice ones over here, I'll just count out a hundred of these and put them in a bag, too. It'll just be a bag full of a hundred, and then I'll still charge 20 bucks for it.